back everybody welcome back living live daily with jay i'm out here on the fishing pier at east point florida guys gonna get ready to try to come out here and get on them nice day gloomy day but we finna make it happen and get it started i'm gonna get all my gopro and everything set up and try to get out here on some drum to start it got some crab right here that i'm gonna be using i'm gonna be throwing out right there my burning shop right there 40 got some 40 pound mono over here all the way down to some um about a hundred pound wire leader right here you'll need that wire leader for them big boys out there down to a circle hook right there big circle hook so what i'm gonna be doing it's gonna be getting one of these crabs out there. Actually, that right there. Got him and gave him a little smack. And I'm um, just breaking him in half and put him on my hook. So, guys, y'all stay tuned. Living live daily with Jay. You're riding with me. Let's get it. All right, guys, I'm getting bait up over here. Get ready to throw out here and get ready to get on some action. And enjoying the day while I'm out here. You can tell by all the fog in the back. That it's a very gloomy day out here but we're making the best of it i end up catching a stingray here and you can tell by the stingray because the way that they pull you know they give you that dead weight no kind of fight it's just a dead pool so and i got everything rebated back up and threw out there waiting on my bike I got my crowd rod over there ready for some action. And there it is. Some more got hit. But immediately I can tell it was another stingray. So what they do, they just bear it down in the sand. And you just pulling them through. You know, they give you no kind of fight at all. So, and you can definitely tell by the way the tip of your rod hit that what it is. So hey, another stingray here. End up foul hooking that one. And so, I went on back out there again. But I ended up having to stop what I was doing to come over here and check my rod because I was getting some action over here. And so, like I said, I got my crab rod down. Been waiting on some action over there. I ended up catching some lot of big drums out here. So, I've been waiting all day for some action on that one. But we're going to see what we have here. So. but the fog and everything kept going in and out you would think it was going to clear up but it's not it was getting misty rain and everything so what we're going to see what we got here it didn't really feel like a stingray but it gave me a little fight but I, we're going to see what it is well yes it's turned out to be another one stingray number three so And again, I'm checking my rod, waiting for some action here. Got a little bit here, so we're going to see what it is. And um, try to get on something different out of here. And immediately I could tell by the tip of my rod, it was giving me some fight. It was giving me a lot of head shake on here. So I was definitely hoping it was something other than a stingray. And guys, yes it was. It was a nice whiting we had here. A nice one about time and these are some good tasting fish right here so we had this flight this one is definitely going into the pail so we're going to keep this one and hope we can catch some more of these right here but guys let's check that out right there that is an awesome whiting a great size and everything all right check them out all right then once again I had to keep an eye on my rod because there yeah, we go getting another bite, some more action on this one right here. And I will head down and check on this and see what I got. I don't have much faith in it. I could tell by the way it was pulling that definitely got another stingray coming up. But we're definitely gonna see right here what we got. 
and I was talking to a lot of people that were passing by. That's all they were catching was steam rays. So it's just a stingy kind of day out here. Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely some steam ray. You can definitely tell by that dead weight. Yeah, check that out. All day steam rays. So. All right, guys, as you can see, I'm all packed up, ready to go back. Head it back in, guys. It's just a slow day today. They say they was tearing them up yesterday, but not so much today. But I can say I end up catching about five stingrays. I caught one whiting. And like I say, when the guy was leaving, he was headed back out. He gave me his whiting, so I end up with four. As you can see, but um, not a terrible day. I was glad to be out of here, out here, nevertheless. So, but like I say, I'm all packed in, got my cart stuff back in, got my fish, and I'm gonna head on to the house, guys, and try to get these cleaned up and cook up something awesome for y'all. So, I'll see y'all back at the house. All right, I made it back from the St. George Fish up here today. And I'm about to clean up the catches that I got. It wasn't the best day today out there. I ended up catching stingray, stingray after stingray. And uh, but it was a great day being out there. Nevertheless, I ended up catching one of the um, whitings out here from this guy here. And then as I fished, it was kept on catching the stingrays. And I talked to a lot of people on their way out. That's all they were catching all day was stingray. But a guy was passing through and asked me did I want the three whitings that he had caught. And so I took those and as I was mentioning in the video that um, I'm going to be going to a place in Georgia that I've been wanting to go and want to show y'all around that place there. So I'm going to clean these whitings up and I'm going to take those whitings with me to Georgia. Because if I get out there in Georgia and don't catch nothing, that would be my catch and clean right there in Georgia so but I'm not gonna tell you where what it is or where it's at it's a place in Georgia I'm going tomorrow and I'm gonna fish there and like I say if I don't catch anything this gonna be my catch right here that I'm gonna be cleaning for y'all in um in Georgia so right now what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be taking my fish and like I say I watched the video where they were butterflying them and I'm just gonna do the same thing with them I'm just gonna butterfly these clean them and right here I'm just gonna just gonna vacuum seal them that's all I'm gonna do I'm gonna vacuum seal them and uh, like I say guys if you don't have a vacuum sealer that is one thing you need to try to get to preserve your fish or any type of meat that you are freezing because putting them in a ziploc bag it don't last as long as you put them in a vacuum sealer so this is a must have definitely what I'm gonna be doing with my fish well let's dive right in and all right and we're gonna dive right in for scaling this fish right here and just like on my last video, you didn't see me scaling the fish under the water. One of my subscribers told me about scaling it under the water. I'm going to do the same method here because it wasn't bad. It was a great method. So let's get right to it. So right here with a spoon. This is an excellent way of doing it with a spoon right here. Just get it. And like I said, we're going under the water. And like I say, the guy told me he won't get scales everywhere. And like I say, it was... A, gotta say it's an excellent way of doing it and like I say, I'm gonna scale them up butterfly them up and vacuum seal them up and like I say I'm gonna take these to Georgia because the day wasn't a bad day I was glad to be out there nevertheless but it wasn't the best day like I said everybody was catching nothing but stingrays out there so I made the best out of it and these are going with me. So, just like that. Under the water. No scales at all. Perfect. Alright, we got the fish all scaled up. And we're going to start by butterflying them. I saw a video where someone was butterflying it, a different way that I was doing it. And I said, I'm going to try that way and see if I like that way better. So, just get right in by cutting the head off, just like that. And what you want to do 
that you want to get in just basically how you for laying one you just want to come in get right on top of that back make sure you get on top of that backbone and um just like that and you just stay right on top of the backbone come on out through not you don't want to go all the way to the end you don't want to break it all the way through just right there and just kind of work your way down just like that and like I say you don't want to you don't want to go all the way through with it you just want to bring it down just like that bring it in that's so you can see it just like that basically what you that's basically what you want to see right there then the same thing on the other side get in there and stay on top of the rib cage I'm going to try this way because I've seen it. It's look a little different, but I'm going to try it. Top of the rim, okay, just like that. Get all that meat. And that's what you're going to be left with. That right there in the middle, like that. And you just come on down. As you're separating the meat. And then what you want to do is you want to grab it just like this lay it out pick up on that right there and separate all separate it just like that and what you want to separate the spine from all that meat so just like that get them down there then you want just want to cut that off and Get the guts out, just pull the guts out like that and move that. And that's what you'll be left with right there. Nothing but meat. And this is a great way of doing it. You know, some guys, some fishes don't have a lot of meat on them, especially the small one. And this is an excellent way of doing it when you end up with a lot of meat. Check out all that meat. If you want to make a sandwich out of this, the only thing you had to do is is get a couple of the fins off, peck fins, dorsal fins, cut the tail off, and you can use all that for a sandwich. All right, we got two more to do, and guys, we gonna get into it. talk to you a bit about the how I filleted these like I say I watched the video and it seemed like it was a good way to do it I used to have mine split all the way right there but I tried this way I like this way because as you can see you got a whole lot of meat there we saved a lot of the belly meat we got the pin bones out it's just an awesome way to doing it and guys if you like this way just give it a try I will be doing mine this way you know with a smaller fish, like I said, you got all this meat. And when you fillet them off the skin and all that stuff off the backbone, you end up with a little meat on them. Just like you flaying like a crappie or something, you don't get much meat. It's the same thing with these right here. It's just a saltwater crappie right here, I guarantee. But we got plenty of meat on this. And what I'm going to be doing with these, and I'm just going to be vacuum sealing them up and to preserving that meat right here. And these are going to join with me, so it's what I'm gonna be doing with them. All right, we got the fish all cleaned up, as I was saying, guys. And uh, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna vacuum seal two of these to take the Jordan with me, because if I get out there in Georgia and don't catch nothing, this is my backup plan right here. And I'm gonna use two for another um, cook I wanna do for y'all. So, right here, I'm gonna take these two right here. 
Okay, I'm just gonna slide them in just like that. And this is an awesome way, like I say, you wanna preserve your fish, you know, this is a way to do it right here with a um, vacuum sealer. And um, like I say, this is the Food Saver vacuum sealer. I got this off of Amazon. I'll leave a link in a strip description box below if you want to get you one of these but this is a perfect way of keeping your food fresh so and let's say you just lift it up like that and you just sit it right there on the edge and you just shut it down just like that and when you shut it down the light will come on right there you have an option for moist or dry I usually do mine on moist because you know you don't clean the fish and everything they're moist so and after you do that, just hit the vacuum button. And what it does, get all it out. Just like that. You want to suck all the air out of it. This right here will go, and the seal will go to flashing. And when everything goes out, it'll seal it right across here. So you just wait for it to go out. And you're ready to go. All right, so what we're going to be doing tonight is we're going to be doing a whiting and um, we're going to be doing Brussels sprouts, we're going to be doing potatoes and a nice lemon dill sauce. So let me show you what we're going to be dealing with. We have the um, whiting from the um, yesterday that um, I cleaned and I vacuum sealed right here. And we're going to be doing some um, potatoes. We will be doing Brussels sprouts. We also will be doing a nice creamy lemon dill sauce. And all I'm gonna be doing with the potatoes, I'm gonna be putting them in some water, boiling them, of course, and the Brussels sprouts will be not your normal traditional Brussels sprout. I'm gonna put a little twist on them. I know they're gonna be great. So, and then the lemon dill sauce that I'm gonna be dealing with, we will have fresh dill, lemon, capers, and wine, and butter and heavy whipping cream. Next, we'll be getting into cutting up our onions that I picked myself out of the garden I had grown over there. And we're gonna get into, like I say, we're just gonna be dicing these up real thin. Just like that. And also, I wanna mention about the giveaway that I'm gonna be doing about for my merch right here. I'm gonna begin with some of my merch. And the giveaway will go from now to March 17th. So, and the only requirement is that you, that you are an, a subscriber. You know, you leave a like and a comment on any of my videos. The more you leave, comments you leave, the better your chances. From now to March 17th, when I will be doing the giveaway. As the potatoes right here are getting ready, they're almost done. I'm going to start off by putting my own pork in right here. We're getting our render down. And the thing I want to do is just get it. I want to get that flavor in, in down. So I'm going to just let it sear and let it cook down. And when it cook down, I'm going to be adding my Brussels sprouts in right here. So it will be delicious. See how that coming together, see how it's rendering down, leaving that nice flavor of grease, all that behind right there. So now what I want to do now is turn the heat down a little bit and I want to add in my brush sprouts right here. So I'm going to turn my heat down just a little bit because I want them to, I don't want them to overcook, I want them to cook through. But I don't want it to burn. I want to take, give it time to let all that flavor soak in in them right there. And so I'm just going to turn my heat down just a little bit. And what I want to do is right here, I want to add some of this complete season right here, the Goya season right here. I'm going to add a little bit of that in there. Just right, just going to set it over the top right there. And a little bit of that right there, about that much in there. So. And then, I'm 
just going to get us a, look, a couple of toss right here with the heat turned down. Okay. And I'm just going to set my lid on it right there. So to lock in all the flavors and the end of that moss is going to come down to keep it from um, drying out. So The potatoes are done. The only thing we're going to do, we're just going to kill the heat and we're going to set these to the side. Meanwhile, we are preparing our butter for our fish right here. So we're just letting our butter melt down and then while that we're getting melted and everything, what we're going to do is we're going to cut a couple of these lemons right here and just let it sear down and get that flavor into the butter. Then we're going to add our fish to it. So, hey, it's coming along fine, guys. It's really looking good. I want y'all to take a look at these Brussels sprouts right here before we get too far. Hey, check that out right there. That salt pork is doing its thing in there. I think these are about ready to... Just like cabbages, you know, you don't want to cook them too long. And check that out right there. You can also see some of that, that little meat right in there. All the brush sprout is sucked up all that flavor. Coming along perfect, guys. All right, as that butter is melting down, like I said before, I want to take one of my lemons, and I'm just going to cut some strips out of them right here and the only thing I'm going to do I got four right here and I'm just going to set them in there just like this and I'm let them sear and all that flavor going to come out into my butter and then I'm going to add my fish I'm going to sear them on both sides two to three minutes on both sides guys and they're going to be ready to go all right as you can see, I removed the lemon from the only thing I wanted to do was get a sear on them. And I just want to come with that flavor of the lemon again incorporated into my butter. So now I'm going to do now, I'm going to lay the fish in, skin side first. Mm, can you hear it? Can you hear that sizzle? That's what you're looking for right there. All right there, check that out. Mm, 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 mm. All right, and while that's searing on the other side, I'm gonna hit it with a little of that Seminole Swamp Season, guys. The stuff that you go to, it's gonna hit it real lightly. You not much, just real lightly, just like that. And I'm gonna follow by putting in a little pepper right here. That is all that we are putting on this fish right here. And then when I flip it. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. And while also while it's cooking, I'm going to be putting in some of the fresh deal right here. This is the organic deal right here. So I'm going to be putting some of that in right there. So it'll get some of those flavors in. Just like that. Just like that. That gear looks cut. Check it out, guys. Okay. Check that out right there. Oh, man, don't that look good? This is done. We're going to set it to the side while we make the lemon dill sauce. So. All right, as our butter melt for our sauce, we also will be adding some Pino de Grisio wine right here. Have a little of that. That's about that much. Also, we're going to be adding some capers, guys. A little of the juice. And then we're going to add some of the capers in there. About that much. A little bit more, about that much. Okay. And just top it all off. Just a little, maybe just a little bit, a little splash for color. About that much. And the first thing. 
If you hold your hand over like this right here, you get juice and then you also catch the seed. that sauce out. Oh, see how all that coming together? You don't want to have your heat too hot. Just like a medium heat. Let all those flavors come together. Alright guys, check that sauce out. That is what you're looking for right there in that sauce. And I'm going to add a little of that deal to it. To make everything come together. Just take you some of that deal. Just pick your few pieces of that deal off. Just like that. Just like that, guys. Look at it. Pick your little piece off just like that. Guys, check that out. And while that coming together, I'm going to be starting on making my mashed potatoes. some lovely goodness right there and but what I want to do before I get into this I want to add the sauce right now and I want to remind you remind you that this sauce is packed with plenty of flavor so you don't need much that lemon coming through with the capers and everything so you don't need much so what we're going to do we're just going to drizzle some right across like this right there just like that that's all you're going to need right there. Put a little bit of the capers on the top. And I want to put some of my onions on it right here. Just like that. Alright guys. And a little lemon wedge. Right there. Alright guys. And that's what I have for you right there. Check it out. Seared whiting mashed potatoes and sear Brussels sprouts. We're going in guys, right here. Check that out. Mm, check that out right there. Just as I expected guys, that is, that's good. That's awesome. I'm gonna try these right here because I'm the one that don't like Brussels sprouts, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna try them and all right, guys, these right Brussels sprouts are delicious. And I'm not a big fan of Brussels sprouts right here, but these are good. If you're not the one that likes Brussels sprouts, get us a try with that salt pork. And, you know, you don't like that bitterness of it. This right here pulled all the bitterness in it. You don't get nothing but that flavor. I'm telling you, there's sear on them. It's awesome. So, and the mashed potatoes, you already know they're good. So, oh, man. Man, delicious guys, I'm telling you, this is, and like I say, I wasn't even going to film today, but by the weather being bad out there, I decided to come in here and make me some lunch, and um, just bring y'all along with me guys, and like I say, this is all I got for you, but like I say, don't forget about the giveaway that I'm going to be doing right here to now until March 17th, you know, only thing you got to do is, if you are a subscriber, just leave a like and a comment on any one of my videos, so. Keep that in mind, guys. Until next time, I'll see you in the next one.